Hey all this is part two and I hope you had a good time doing that data modeling thing. It can be kind of fun to start picking out stuff and messing around with it like that. Uh, in this case we're going to use a specific uh, idea for modeling data into an object and so almost invariably the way that we're going to do this is that an object allows us to count or to keep track of several different items at once mainly for a couple of reasons. One is is that we can't have duplicate key entries. You can't have an object that has two different keys that have the same, uh, actually spelled the same way keys. So what that gives us the ability to do is to count things using an object. So here is a version of this without any real context. And we're just going to paste it in here. So here's an array of items to count. We have one A, a B, another A, another B, a C, and a third B. So this is our object where we're going to store the counts for each one of these variables. Rather than creating individual accounts, um, the way an object is built is, is going to allow us to do this a little bit more easily than if we just had count of A, count of B, count of C. Uh, and the reason would be is that each time that we come to a new value here, we're going to take advantage of the fact that an object can't store duplicate keys to decide if we've already counted that and should just increment the count or if we need to instantiate the count for that key. So we loop over the array of items to count, quite simply. We're going to describe current item to be whatever is located at index i for the iteration. And then we're going to consider two cases. One is that we have not counted the current item. And you might recall that if we ask an object what the value of a key is that it doesn't have, it's going to tell us undefined. So we take advantage of that by saying if object of counts at the current item is equal to undefined, then we know we have not counted that item yet. So what we do is afterwards, the count of that item, seeing as that was the first time, is one. Otherwise, we know that the key exists because the value of it was not undefined. And if the value of it is not undefined, it's going to be some you know, integer value, either one, two, three, all the way up to however many you know, would be reasonable. So if that's the case, we know it already exists, we know it has a numerical value, so we just increment it by saying object of counts at current item plus plus, which is going to reassign the value of that key to be one more than whatever it was. So if we run this, we're going to see that our object comes out having a nice total of all of the values in the array that we're counting. So now let's talk about a list of doctors. And so like this is the list of doctors that we're on call or something, we've got Dr. J, K, J, M, J, K, C. So here's the object of our doctor counts. We're going to similarly iterate over the attending output uh, array. I don't know what this would be for. Maybe it's like, you know, duty on call or something like that. Uh, on line six, we're going to say current doc to create an alias for whatever the current value in attending output is. And I guess it would be like the output of the attending. So maybe it's like cases solved or like patients attended to. Anyway current doc is going to be whichever doc we've currently iterated to and that alias is going to help us keep track of that of that fact. So if the current doc and this might be a typo but it might also just be one of those where it's supposed to not be that descriptive. I'm going to go with typo. So what this should say is that if current doc is not in uh, doctor count which is to say that we haven't registered that this doctor had you know appeared on this list before meaning that its value is undefined, we're going to instantiate it at one. Otherwise, we know we have seen this doctor before and we're going to increment their total by one. So if we run this, we should see Dr. J has three, Dr. K has two, and one each for Dr. M and Dr. C. So if we run, excellent. So that's pretty much it. Uh, data modeling and this are not as linked as maybe they could be, uh, but you want to figure that it's a good idea to talk about data modeling, and this is a very, very important pattern that's going to be very useful for you, for you coming up in the, uh, the following modules. So with that, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it, and we'll see you in the next one.